open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. I bid you welcome in joining us here at Holy Trinity Church in Fortitude Valley, Brisbane, for this service of Sung Even Song on the sixth Sunday of Easter. Oh, be joyful in God, all ye lands. Sing a praises unto the honor of his name. Make his praise to be glorious. Say unto God, O oh, how wonderful art thou in thy works. Through the greatness of thy power shall thine enemies be found liars unto thee. For all the world shall worship thee, sing of thee and praise thy name. O oh, come hither, and behold the works of God. How wonderful he is in his doing toward the children of men. He turned the sea into dry land, so that they went through the water on foot. There did we rejoice thereon. He ruleth with his power forever. His eyes behold the people. And such as will not believe shall not be able to exalt themselves. Oh, praise God, ye people, and make the voice of his praise to be Who holdeth us all in life, and suffereth not our feet to sleep. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here beginneth the 14th verse of the 8th chapter of the book called The Acts of the Apostles. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit, for as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Now when Simon saw that the Spirit was given through the laying on of the apostles' hands, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, so that anyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. But Peter said to him, May your silver perish with you, because you thought you could obtain God's gift with money. You have no part or share in this, for your heart is not right before God. Repent, therefore, of this wickedness of yours, and pray to the Lord that, if possible, the intent of your heart may be forgiven you. For I see that you are in the gall of bitterness and the chains of wickedness. 
Simon answered, Pray for, the, for me to the Lord, that nothing of what you have said may happen to me. Now after Peter and John had testified and spoken the word of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem, proclaiming the good news to many villages of the Samaritans. Here endeth the first lesson. Here beginneth the 15th verse of the 11th chapter of the book of the Revelation of St. John the Divine. Then the seventh angel blew his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven, saying, 
The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. Then the 24 elders who sit on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshipped God, singing, We give you thanks, Lord God Almighty, who are and who were, for you have taken your great power and begun to reign. The nations raged, but your wrath has come, and the time for judging the dead, for rewarding your servants, the prophets and saints, and all who fear your name, both small and great, and for destroying those who destroy the earth. Then God's temple in heaven was opened, and the ark of his covenant was seen within his temple, and there were flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, an earthquake, and heavy hail. Here endeth the second lesson. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker, maker of heaven and earth, and, and in Jesus Christ, Christ his, his only Son, Son our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. 
and with thy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in the earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen, and mercifully hear us when we call upon Thee. Endue Thy ministers with righteousness, and make Thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save Thy people, and bless Thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. Because there is none other that fighteth for us, but only Thou, O God. O God, make clean our hearts within us, and take not Thy Holy Spirit from us. Almighty God, who has given Thine only Son to be unto us both a sacrifice for sin, and also an ensample of godly life. Give us grace that we may always most thankfully receive his inestimable benefit, and also daily endeavor ourselves to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee, we being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest, and quietness, through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Lighten our darkness, we beseech Thee, O Lord, and by Thy great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of Thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. God 
in his holiness. Praise him, praise him, him the firmament of, of his, his call. Praise him in the sinless and The response to Lord in your mercy is hear our prayer. Lord in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for the nations of the world and especially for those whose way of life has been overturned by the current pandemic. Grant their leaders wisdom, their people's patience and hope, and those who seek for a cure, success. We remember also those places where life has been disrupted by war, by natural disaster and by internal divisions. Open their hearts to receive your peace, that hatred, intolerance and greed may give way to trust and hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for your church throughout the world, for all ministers who seek to serve you in new and unfamiliar ways, and to care for your people in extraordinary times. We pray for all your people who must worship you in new and different ways. Help us to understand that your love never changes and to proclaim your gospel no less faithfully to all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our community and for all who are in need at this time, for the homeless, the unemployed, the fearful, those without hope, and those without family or friends. We ask your blessing on all who work with and for them, and on all who offer support. And as we are mindful of the needs of others, so may we also remember to give you thanks for what we have. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for those who are in our thoughts and on our hearts, for those who have asked for our prayers, and for those who have no one to pray for them in time of need. Give comfort and strength to those who are sick, or lonely, or afraid, or grieving, and your blessing to those who care for and support them. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We give you thanks for those who have died in your love and for your faithful people in every age. Grant that with them and all your saints, we may be brought to a joyful resurrection and the fulfillment of your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. And finally, an excerpt from the prayer for use in time of plague or sickness from the Book of Common Prayer. O oh, Almighty God, who in thy wrath didst send a plague upon thine own people in the wilderness for their obstinate rebellion against Moses and Aaron, and also in the time of King David, 
didst slay with the plague of pestilence three score and ten thousand, and yet remembering thy mercy didst save the rest. Have pity upon your world, which now is visited with great sickness and mortality. So may it now please thee to withdraw from us this plague and grievous sickness, that being delivered we may glorify thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and dost promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants, as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth, and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love, the love of, God, of God and the, and the fellowship, fellowship of the, of the Holy, Holy Ghost, Ghost be, be with, with us all, all evermore. evermore. Amen. Amen. I invite you to join us here at Holy Trinity this coming Thursday at 9.30am. Uh, in place of our usual said Mass, we shall have a sung Mass for the Ascension of our Lord. And if you're not able to join us at 9.30, as with all of our services, uh, the service can be viewed uh, on YouTube at any time after that. Then we'll follow Compline on Friday at 8 p.m. and Mass for the seventh Sunday of Easter at 9.30 a.m. on Sunday. The hymn before the homily is Now the Gleam Green Blade Riseth. <laughs> In the name of God, who raises from the dead, who is the resurrection, and who brings resurrection life to the world. Amen. Amen. Do you think that things are not as good as they used to be? Oh, don't get me started, I hear you exclaim. 
The strawberries were juicier, the milk was creamier, the sky was brighter, more young people stood up for you on the tram, and the summers were stormier. I hereby offer a jumbo Kit Kat as a reward for the most outrageously true recollection. Answers on the back of a postcard, please, or even by email. My hunch, though, is that summers really used to be stormier. If we could dig around in meteorological data, I feel quite confident that there would be evidence of more regular crackers of thunderstorms breaking in the afternoons every few days, bringing relief to the heat and the humidity. And that's partly why I am massively disappointed today when the Bureau of Meteorology app declares dire warnings of storms and damaging hail, which never seem to happen. God's wrath also doesn't seem to have happened. The vision of St. John the Divine on the sounding of the seventh trumpet was of flashes of lightning, rumbling peals of thunder, an earthquake and heavy hail. Not damaging hail, mind, just heavy divine hail. Yet I can't say that we've seen any evidence of it. No divine lightning. No divine thunder, no divine hail, heavy, damaging or otherwise. No tumultuous world events that can't otherwise be explained as coincidence or having socio-political motivations or whatever. It seems we've spent a few centuries getting unnecessarily worked up over God's judgment, as there doesn't seem to have been much of it about. It has, though, been exploited. The notion of God's judgment has been misused as a tool for church or political purposes. It has been used to coerce compliance over how people live their lives. In some faith groups, God's judgment is still abused as a terrible threat to those whose sexuality sits somewhere on the diversity spectrum away from heterosexuality. And not just that. The damage to people's lives in the tortuous misrepresentation of God's judgment has been shocking and scandalous. But don't get me wrong. I assent to the creedal statement which we have just recited, that Jesus shall come from the right hand of God the Father Almighty to judge the quick and the dead. We are too often quick to zoom in on biblical texts to wallow in the vividness of what judgment might look like. And when we do, we miss one thing, the vividness of redemption. If we start and stop with judgment, then we can conclude no more than God is a capricious psychopath. And that simply does not reflect the gospel of Jesus the Christ, who declares the love of God. With judgment comes redemption. And if judgment is vivid, as depicted in the text from Revelation, full of thunder and lightning and unspecified quantities of hail, then how much more vivid is redemption? It was vivid for the 24 elders who sat before God. They didn't worship with meek, trembling voices. They worshipped in song. They sang their thanksgiving to God's eternality. They sang their adoration of God's power. And yes, they sang of God's judgment, but they also sang of God's bountiful rewards for the arrays and arrays of God's people. When we speak of fear of God, we mustn't think that we're referring to the one-dimensional response as one would have to danger, pain, or harm. It's a poorly used word. We really mean something more like reverence. It is a convergence of awe, adoration, honor, worship, confidence, thankfulness, love, and yes, fear. 
C.S. Lewis described fear of God as a sense of inadequacy in our love for the Lord. So fearing God does not mean the soul should shrink or cower. On account of the vivid redemption which follows God's vivid judgment, the soul should soar with hope. We cannot sit on that kind of vividness and keep it secret. Yes, bearing witness to God's vivid, vivid loving redemption is as dangerous now as it was in and around the episodes of the Acts of the Apostles. We need to be creative in how we bear witness to that redemption in our times. So what makes God's redemption vivid for you? What release do you experience in the death and resurrection of Christ? There is no doubt that God's judgment sits in and among all of that somehow. But there's also no doubt that redemption flows from it. There's nothing so keen as self-scrutiny when we know that others are also looking, and not least when God is also looking. And so when we, and God, take that long, hard look at ourselves, where to next? What is it about our sinful self that we need to leave behind and celebrate vivid redemption? And just as importantly, what is it about our loving self that we need to uphold and to put out there to the world and to celebrate vivid redemption? Our experience of redemption, of being gathered closer to God and welcomed as a citizen of the New Jerusalem, might not be amid the cataclysm of lightning, thunder or hail it might feel more like the calm after a storm, a tiny realisation of God's saving presence in our lives, an invigoration to share that experience more widely. Vividness need not have, vividness of redemption need not have the character of a tempest. It can be as peaceful as a fresh sky, as a soaring rainbow, the satisfaction of being complete, the relief of being made whole, being brought vividly to God. Alleluia. Amen. The hymn is As Now the Sun's Declining Rays.
May the angels of God watch over you this night. May the prayers of Our Lady Mary and all saints surround you and sustain you. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make the Lord's face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of the Lord's countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. with you. Let us bless the Lord. And God may grant the living grace to the departed rest to the church, the world and commonwealth, peace, unity and concord and to us and all thy servants life everlasting. Amen. <laughs>